We got uh, legendary Keefy D in the house. Uh, doing uh, big numbers on the internet lately. Yeah. <laughs> What's your interview? But, uh, man, I appreciate you coming by, man. I know you're busy, and we've been trying to link up. and uh, So I really appreciate you, man, coming by. So, yeah. um, so hey, I want to get into like kind of talking about your book a little bit, uh, Compton Street Legend. Yeah. I had the opportunity to read it. And um, I thought it was awesome, the book, you know, good content. And um, and there was like so much, you know, so much to your story that I that I feel like that, that was just, you know, a lot of people haven't heard. You know, I think a lot of people, they focus a lot on that Tupac stuff, but they don't really look at. It's, it's, it's bigger than Tupac, homie. Yeah. This, yeah, this ain't all about Tupac, this is about me. Yeah, and, and, and then the, the, and again, the book's called Compton, uh, Compton Street Legend. So I want to kind of just got, kind of go through there, and it kind of starts off where you, um, you're going to the liquor store, and, um, and there's eight dudes coming, uh, like running down the street with bats in, in, in chains, and you like kind of look back and see where they're going. And you kind of realize they're coming for for you, for you. So kind of how that is that kind of like your yeah your uh, intro. Yeah, uh, I was up at the liquor store on the corner. I went up there in my uh, '68 Chevy. Came out the store and the dudes was in the corner, and they had uh, and I didn't know we had a, our, my little my homies that got into it with the night before. I didn't know. So I uh, came out the store. They hit the corner. And uh, I seen they was coming for me, so I jumped in my car, and somehow they got my other side door open, and they jumped me, rushed me, fucked me up pretty good, gave me a little concussion and shit. So I went uh went around uh, my house, got my machine gun and my nine millimeter, went around there, and uh, on the on the route I saw a dude uh, house, one of the dude houses was right there. I shot it up a couple of clips. Hit the corner, seen his brother. Dude was uh, out there with his hands all up and shit. And uh, shit, I jumped out. There was a lot of people out there though. So I just jumped out, hit him with the butt of the gun. Me and my homies kind of fucked him up. <laughs> yeah. can, you, can, you, can you say where he was from, where they was from? Oh, uh, no, they, they was from uh, other Crips. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah but my homies, they got into it with them the night before. So you didn't really have nothing to do with it. it was just it was yeah. the home, it was the homies got into yeah. it and you were like kind of uh, a casualty of the uh, circumstances. Yeah. yeah. So you went by, shot shot up the place, and then you got you got pretty messed up, right? Yeah. So I, yeah, I went to the hospital. When I was there, the sheriff's not the sheriff's, but the police came uh, to me to jail for it. Okay. So I went well, to you, you ended up going to the hospital, right? Like yeah. your, your sister took you to the hospital. Yeah. And you still had shells. Shit in the car, yeah. In the car, so they ended up taking to jail. Yeah. So did you end up getting charged for that, or? Yeah, I wound up uh, getting seven years for that. Seven years. Yeah. And is that kind of when you went to uh, Tracy? Yeah, uh, DBI Tracy, yeah, Gladiator School, in California. Was that kind of like your first time? Uh, in the pen. Yeah, in the that, pen. That was my first time in the pen. Yeah. And then, what, what, like, what was that experience like? Like, how old were you at the time? I was like nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, it was like uh, it's like maybe like thirty five hundred inmates. Half the line was Crips, so that was like the big Crip capital of the fucking California, really. So you know, no no red red allowed. Even the Mexican Southern Mexicans was there, so no red was allowed up there. Period. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and that shit was dangerous as a motherfucker. Yeah, about thirteen people died. About the, I was up there like uh, for like three years. Then uh, they transferred us out when they opened up Corcoran. Okay. Transferred us out. I did like fucking six months in Corcoran and got out. Okay. Yeah. And then what, like, was there any, like, thing that happened there that where it was like a close call for you or was it kind of like everybody embraced you and it was just kind of like you did your time? And I just did my time, stayed out of the loop, shit, got up out of there. I was making my master plan so when I hit the streets again uh -huh. so I could be ready so they wouldn't catch me again. Okay. Yeah. So so how how did you get into like game banging? Oh, it's just uh our neighborhood I mean, you know, it's just a family thing, grew up 
And there is just our culture okay, as you're coming up. Yeah. So, and so big brothers in and all that shit. Yeah. So you already had older brothers that was from from the neighborhood. Yeah, already. Yeah. So, so were they were they Crips at the time, or was it was it were they, you know, were they not formed as Crips? Like they was just like a neighborhood gang. It was a neighborhood gang called the Us Boys. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, about seventy one, they became uh, Crips. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you. At that time, what, were you part like? Were you part of the, the gang, or were you just kind of? I was of, just a little baby grip wannabe. Yeah. Well, once I hit junior high school, I got in. Yeah. So tell me about that experience. Like, how did, uh, you know, what, what day or, you know, what, what, what happened where you just was like, all right, you know, put me on the set or, like, what, what was I, like? I, I didn't have to put in. I, you know, my family deep. Grew up over there, yeah. I ain't get to put, yeah. Okay. I had never go through no shit like that. So no initiation. You was just nah. kind of like born yeah. into it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, I was there when it formed the day it started, so I didn't have to do that. Yeah. Okay. To jump in. And then, um, and I read in your book that you was out there shooting dice, kind of when you was first getting going, and your pop, your pops pulled up, and you wasn't looking, but. It, you heard him kind of say like, "What? What are you doing?" Yeah. And you knew from the voice without even looking that it was him. Yeah. And um, I think you took me on, disciplined me. Yeah. That's when uh, you can still whoop your kids. Yeah. That's, yeah. Nowadays you can't. Yeah, at all. You go to jail quick. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I, you know, I, in, in your book you kind of emphasize that, uh, you know, the stigma of the single, you know, single mom. You know, rough. You know, rough upbringing wasn't necessarily like that in Compton. Like that in Compton. No, they. You have, my generation had both of their parents, and most of the kids at my school, at least ninety some percent, ninety five percent, had both of their parents. So that was a bunch of you know. Yeah. It was like the upper class, especially my side of town in Compton. Yeah, it was uh, our 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 property value is more than the other parts of Compton. Gotcha. Yes, yeah. So, 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 talk about your parents. Like your 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 father, he was a marine. Yeah, he was a marine corps. He was a marine, and then your mother, what did she do? She was a homemaker. Homemaker. Yeah. Okay, and, and I know um, in the book you brought up uh, your your father went down the I think it was Mexico. Yeah, Caliente. Caliente. Hit for fifty thousand. Hit the pick six. So, so. So hitting fifty thousand, like how much would that be like hitting today? Oh Lord, that's like the lotto. It uh -huh. was a million. Yeah, because uh, back then you can get potato chips for five cents. You know, candy bars for five cents. Yeah. Soders, three, four cents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was real cheap back then. Yeah. So he hit the fifty thousand, and then you, at the time. You guys were living in Watts. Watts. Yeah, we moved to Compton from Watts. Okay. Yeah, so shit, we was like one of the first black families over in our neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. And then when, when you guys first moved in, like the neighbors, like did they embrace you guys, welcome you guys, or was it kind of still like segregation or? Uh, our neighbors was cool. There was a uh, guy named uh, Mr. Clark. We called him Grandpa. He helped me ride. Uh, started riding bikes and stuff. Uh -huh. Made a swing on this big tree for us and all that. He was a cool dude. Uh -huh. He died in like like 1970, 71. Okay. Yeah. And when that's, that's, that's when it started flipping to the black community, like 70, 71, 72, our neighborhood. Yeah. And, and what do you think like caused that? You, you think it was? The white flight, they just got away. They didn't want to, I guess they didn't want to live around blacks. Yeah. And I know you, you talked about an experience where um, you was with your mother in the car and some some white folks pulled up and... Yeah, some dudes in a, a white, 50, I mean a blue 57 Chevy in, our, in Southside too. It's on a poinsettia and uh, right there in Caldwell. Uh -huh. Me and my mom were walking from the uh, grocery store. It was called Cole's Market. They pulled up on the side of us, called us a bunch of uh, N-words. Like, dang. So I was kind of had me fucked up. Yeah. And, and your mom, like, how did, she, how did she react to that? Like, you know, she just. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't worry. She just gonna grab me and hug me. She said I was kind of scared. Okay. 
I was about four or five years old, yeah. And then your father, he was, he was a Marine? Yeah, he, he was a Marine Corps. So was he very, like, very disciplined, very, very strict? Very strict, yeah. Straight, straight to the point, yeah. And then, you know, like, if you guys out, got out of line, he, he was catching an ass beating? Yeah, he, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. Any, any parents and competent people, my generation got disciplined. Yeah. Exactly. What do you think about this generation? Shit, they wear them pants tight. They just ignorant. They, they ain't got no respect for the, uh, you know, the younger generation. I mean, the older generation, period. Yeah. Yeah, just very disrespectful. It's uh, it's always amazing, man, because it seemed like this, you know, this culture or this, uh, this generation, not culture, but generation, you know, like they, they kind of embrace at one point doing drugs, you know, like taking pills yeah, yeah, and they, all uh, stuff. Yeah, the pills. Yeah. The fucking pills, lean, that's crazy. They, yeah, my generation, we was trying to make the money. Yeah, so yeah. Instead of using the shit, yeah. And if you was doing drugs back then, it was kind of like yeah. frowned, frowned upon. Oh, like, yeah, they shun your motherfucking ass. Yeah. Yeah, look like a damn fool. But they, they glorify it now, this generation do. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And All in songs and everything. Popping perkies and uh, fucking lean and <laughs> they fucking crazy. Uh, snorting coke, just doing all kinds of shit. Chasing the dragon, whatever, yeah. Stupid snorting pills. It, and they glorify the tight pants, wearing purses. Oh man, they, they some weird people, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, so tell me about some of the guys you grew up with. Like, I, I, I read in your book, um, Tayshawn Prince's brother, and Tayshawn Prince, he was around. You got yeah, they was, yeah. Uh, Tayshawn Prince, Dennis Johnson. Uh, it was a few dudes I don't know that went to the pros. Mike Richardson, uh, Kenny Landro. Yeah, it's a lot of people in our neighborhood went to the pros. Jason Thomas, he was up for the Heisman. Play quarterback for UNLV and all this shit. He was, yeah. So, so a lot, a lot of talent came out. Out of our neighborhood, yeah, a lot of talent. And then would, you know, a lot of times, cause, like I would see, you know, some of the older homies, like they would, you know, if you could play sports and you was good, they'd be like, you know, stay away from this game, man. Exactly. Shit. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I try to do for my uh, little homies. Yeah. Did did any of them ever come back and and. Uh, Throw y'all a couple of dollars or, you know, look out for y'all. You know, some of the ones that hit it big. Really? I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't really need that money. I was making my own money. I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to pay nobody for no money. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that. That's a good segue into talking about, you know, really the rise of Keefe D. You know, in the book, like, you know, I read that, at, you know, at one point, um, there was somebody from your guys' neighborhood that kind of put, got, you know, where you really became big. You know, there was a point where um, in the book you, you brought up, you were, you, you were a, a ball boy at Compton College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was little, my teacher, his name was Doc Green. He was the, uh, he was the head uh, trainer over at Compton College, like the uh, position over there. So, uh, he asked me, do I, I was a smart kid, making straight A's in his class, so he asked me, would like to uh, be the ball boy trainer over there, because he seen I was uh, playing Pop Warner, yeah. baseball and stuff, wearing jerseys to school. Like, yeah, you want to be the ball boy? So that was a good experience. I went to Hawaii, all over the country, because they, they had the number one basketball team in the country. A lot of them dudes made the pros, like Ike Wakefield, uh, Larry Hollifield, a lot of them dudes made the pros, yeah. James Washington. Out in Lister, yeah, Compton College had a farm system that was going from uh, Compton College to UCLA, like Ed Gray, all them bad motherfuckers, yeah. So even the coach Walt Hazard was at Compton College. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Coach, yeah, he played for the Boston Celtics. Yeah, so they they had a uh, good, pretty thing going, sending athletes out the basketball team. Okay, and then um, you ended up kind of being like the team manager for multiple sports after that, yeah, correct? exactly. Football, baseball, all that. And w when I got older, uh, the baseball coach, he was kind of smoking weed, buying weed from us. So one day I went up there, fool, uh, 
I sat down, he brought an ounce, 60 bucks. So he pulled out his drawer, came out of there with like four or five ounces. Uh-huh. Said, uh, uh, see what you can do, see what your brother can do with this. But I didn't get that shit to my brother. I, I, I <laughs> kept that shit for myself, started working that. Yeah, that's how I came, uh, came up in the game. Okay. Back then, it was, they was giving out uh, quarter tees for $50. So you are automatic double your money because these ounces was costing like $3,500 so shit. I was rolling. So so tell me about the baseball coach. So he kind of got you into... Um... Yeah, he pulled out his drawer that day and had like four ounces. He's like, see what your brother can do with this. I kept that shit for myself. Uh -huh. got started, I started like three crack houses after that and got the rolling off that shit. Yeah, then I went to... And, and then, like, so were you still, like, a, a ball boy or manager at the time? I was too old for that. I was, like, 17. But I was still in contact with them dudes up there, yeah. I stopped that stuff when I uh, had, had my daughter. I had her when I was 16. Okay. So I stopped. So, so you, you kind of started off there, and then you kind of, like, evolved into where you were pushing some major weight. So, like, tell me about, like, how you evolved to you know, maybe quote unquote, like big, like Rick Ross type. Um. Well, uh, shit. One of my partners named FL, he, uh, he was, uh, I came back from Alabama and I needed like 15 keys. So he was rolling with me that day. He one of my mentors, older dude, real smart and all that. So I went and brought five keys from this Mexican. When he got three keys from the homie over here, I just pieced it. He like, man, you got to go to all them people to get fucking 15 keys. Said, you need a plug? I'm like, yeah. He said, man, I know some fucking Columbians I can hook you up with. So, uh, shit. I'm like, all right, cool. So the next day we went, met the dude on uh, Lakewood Boulevard right there off the 91 at that Denny's. And uh, he pulled up. He was a, like a kid. I was like 27, 26, 27 years old. Dude was like a kid when he pulled up. Like, damn, he's like, like 19 years old. And he just said, oh, man, I ain't got nothing right now, woo, woo, woo. So when we left, I thought my boy was bullshit. I said, man, dude don't even look like he got no birds. So shit, uh, went out of town and moved in 15 that I had. Got back, went and brought a 15 from this Mexican. So on the way back, I was at the corner on uh, Long Beach and the laundry. And it just so happened, the Colombian boy was right there. He like, man, I'm all. So he followed me to my little house over there in Southside. And uh, shit, he said, uh, get a driver. So we went over there in uh, this one bed apartment out there in Hartown, Lawndale, Hartown area. And we opened up all the cabinets. And it was birds in every one of them. And it wound up being like 148 of them. You haul boxes, the motherfuckers up here. I did. You haul box, taped them up. It was we didn't have enough room in the uh, in the trunk, so we put the third box in the motherfucking back seat. Drove home and shit. After then, I was fucking the mayor Compton, boss. Yeah. And that kind of like started the the drug, like started on a big level. It was on a super super big level. Yeah. And then at that point, where you. There, were, I, I know in the book you talked about going out of town and dealing with people in different states like Alabama, uh, Ohio, yeah. uh, Michigan, Detroit, uh, yeah, Detroit, everywhere. Michigan. Yeah. So you, you, did you end up like just setting the network up, taking people from your neighborhood and saying, "All right, hey, you going?" To no, no, I, I, no, I don't, I didn't do no shit like that. Uh, I went and tried to find a dude that's rolling out there. I don't want to take over people's neighborhood, yeah. nothing like that, because that'll make people hate you. You know what I'm saying? It's out of town, niggas coming over here trying to take over our block. I didn't do it like that. I went and found the, boat, the biggest dude in that town and put him down. Okay. And I'd go to the next town and wait for my money like that. But mostly, I never had to really be out of town because I had uh, the homies doing it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it was off the chains with that. So, and you started getting really big, and then one of your, like one of your, 
I think it was mentors or, or asked you to borrow $70,000 because they had some money tied up or they're going through a divorce or. Yeah. And you ended up. Uh, yeah, he went and wound up giving me like six uh, apartment buildings. I mean, six uh, properties. Each one of them had two units on it and stuff like that. Yeah. And then so, so the 70000 in exchange, you came back a couple months, gave you six properties. I, I wound up giving him like $178,000. Oh, he nice. gave me like six properties, all of them were free and clear. So it was cool. Then uh, he, he went out to Houston and, and had a heart attack and died. And his daughter sued me for the properties back. Said I had her, her dad wasn't in the right state of mind. So the judges and the, everybody was asking me where did I get the money from. Mm -hmm. So I, they, I wound up losing the houses back to the lady. Oh, okay. And what, what were the houses worth at that time? Or the property? They was worth about sixty, seventy thousand each or total. Each, each, oh, each okay. company. Yeah. So it was a good deal for you. Yeah, it was. A good, yeah, it was a sweet deal. Yeah. I was gonna, uh, you know, use that. I was gonna sell like two or three of them and buy me a nice house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was my plan. But she fucked up my plans. <laughs> yeah, that bullshit. Um, so at one point, so, so you're selling cocaine, doing birds, and you get into the water business, or PCP, excuse me. Yeah. And um, the, the, there, there was a point where, you know, would you say like you was the, the biggest on the West Coast when it came to PCP at the time, or? I wouldn't say that. No, no, no. I was, mostly I was big with the birds, kilos, yeah. cokes, yeah. So your Colombian connect, JC, in the book, he was a young guy, and uh, he was from Colombia. Yeah. From the same place as Pablo Escobar. Exactly, yeah. And did he migrate here, or did he have family here, or did he just... Uh, he had family here. And the, the, the people don't really let you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They keep you all balanced. What kind of relationship did you have with him? Oh, we were super tight. Good, good dude. Yeah, super, super tight. We did business for about uh about seven, eight years. All good business. Always kept being paid, all that. And at one point did he like leave and his little brother or somebody take over or Yeah, he went to the prison and then the little little brother came and took over, yeah. And at the time you were still doing big numbers with with the little brother? Yeah. The little brother came, swooped in. Once he went, he said, You wanna keep on working? Uh -huh. So we got busy. And then we started getting cracking. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Suge Knight and kind of how you met Suge Knight and uh, became familiar with him. Oh, we was about maybe about 10 years old, 10, 11 years old. I played uh, football at Grady Compton, and his dad, uncles, was our coaches. Him and his, name, him and his other dude named Billinger. And uh, it was like three or four of his uncles was our coach. And his dad was our coach too. And he was uh, he was a center. His uh, he had two cousins that was twins that was on our team. And Ronald and Donald, one of them played quarterback, the other one played tight end. And I was a running back. So, yeah. So w was Suge a big kid for his age? Uh, was he chubby? Was he? He was chubby, little fat chubby dude. Uh -huh. Yeah, at least he had a little red dye in his afro, uh -huh. shit like that. Yeah, he was uh he was overweight, so he kind of had to play with us, uh, you know, because I'm like a year or two older than him, so he had to play with those guys that was a, a little older than him. So he had to play like the offensive line because he was too big. Yeah, right? little little kid. Yeah. Okay. Little fat kid. <laughs> and his father, like, how was his father's relationship with him? You know, kind of. Sometimes, you know, the father coaching thing. Yeah, yeah, the father, uh, you know, football players, they, they the, you know, the, the kids, uh, the coach's son, they, they catch the blues, man, from, <laughs> from the players, yeah, because they make you do all of the exercise, the up downs, the bull ring, uh -huh. six inches, all that old shit. Yeah. So, so yeah. Suge's dad would be on him sometimes? He, he used to be on everybody. Everybody? Yeah. And that was probably back then when you get but, away. But his Uncle T, he was even meaner. Oh, really? Yeah, he was off as a, he was my running back coach. He loved me, though, because I was the fastest on the team. He used to run all the touchdowns. 
So yeah. back then, that's probably when you have a broken leg and they still tell you, get in, get in. All that, you know? all that. You can have a concussion. <laughs> you, you know, you, you have a headache and that's all the time you had a concussion. Then get your ass in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, and then he he kind of was like middle class, right, Shay? Yeah, they was, they was, they was kind of doing good. They had trucking companies, diesels and shit like that. Them nice vans, luxury vans, and they brought, their wives had Cadillacs or Benzes. Uh -huh. All the brothers, they was doing pretty good, all, well off for really, so. And then, like I, I, like I read in the book that, like after games, if y'all did good and won, yeah, we go there, have hot dogs, chips, go swimming in the pool. So they had a, they had a pool. Yeah, the, the uncle had a pool too, Coach T. Oh the wow. Twins had, yeah, both of them had pools. Oh wow, they, they was rolling like that. Yeah, 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 they was rolling. So, and did they live over like by Lutus Park or uh, where? They Lutus? lived over there in the mob mob neighborhood. And the other, the twins lived it on K Street. Okay. Yeah. And, and were, were the twins, were they, were they, did they bang at all? Or they just? Yeah, yeah they kind of started banging at the end, yeah. And were they claiming like Ma, Ma, Ma Piru or? Yeah, yeah, pretty much either. Ma Bar, Lutus Park, one of that little area, yeah. Okay. Like back then, where they back then it was all Lewis Park. Lewis Park, right? Yeah. The gotcha. Mob came out like 82, 83, 80, uh -huh. something like that. Okay. And then, so Suge back then, he wasn't like. He was no, he wasn't game banging or nothing like that, no. No. He uh, seemed like he waited to get a million dollars to start a game banging. <laughs> and that's, that's some backwards ass shit. Yeah. That ain't way to go. So he, was, he wasn't, you know, flamed up or. No, nah, no, nah, he wasn't like that. He was, he couldn't have played on our team if he because it was Santana's, it was Southside Santana's, fucking Kelly Parts, just you know what I'm saying, uh, fucking Atlanta Drives, yeah, Ian Hood, just name some, you know, yeah. Wow. So and he ended up going to I think like El Camino College first, right? And then when no, you went, it was a UNLV, and then yeah, UNLV, 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 UNLV yeah. and then I think he made it to the league, right? Or no, he got to try out for the Rams and stuff. Yeah. Okay, and he got into some trouble, and I think he got yeah. shot or something. Uh, did you Did you guys still stay in touch as he got older from Pop Warner? Like, no, 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 no. we did. No. So when did you see Suge again after like football? Uh, I seen him. Uh, I seen him, we we had a Compton, we had a place called Compton Hydraulics. He came up there with we to one of our hopping contests. Okay, is that when he was like managing bo or a body? Uh, uh, he was a bodyguard for Bobby Brown, right? Or uh, I think he was doing some bodyguard guard stuff. Yeah. So he came up there and just did. Did he have a low rider at the time, or he just watching nah, the contest? That, that's when the uh, Death Row and hey, Chronic it just came out and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So. So Death Row, and the the story is, I mean. Harry O started Death Row, but I read in the book there might have been, you know, like you had a big part in in helping Death Row get started. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I'm, I'm going to leave it at that, though. That's yeah. all I can tell you. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you, like, do you ever, like, look back and be like, man, like, you know. Yeah, I fucked up our, our, our master plan. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to be, yeah. Uh, so, so Suge, he, he starts Death Row and, um, no, he is, he is, he well, let me, started. let me back up. He, he, um, he got the money and then Death Row started and. No, uh, they, 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 they wanted easy, easy E first. Okay. You know so, so they wanted easy E to run the label first. They called, they, they did a conference call with easy E. Okay. And Easy uh, turned him down, and he came over my house and said, "Man, them dudes is in jail. Like, y'all fucking, I don't, you know, had nothing to do with that shit. On, and plus, I'm like, already established. Yeah. Then they got in contact with Dre. And I, I read like the, somebody called you to get in contact with Dre, and you kind of facilitated that and got yeah. Dre's number. Yeah. T t tell me about your relationship with Easy. Like, uh, uh, he was cool. His, uh, his cousin named Big Horse, he was from our neighborhood. And this is before, you know, all that dope game and everything came out. Yeah. But when it came out, Horse was kind of big time from our neighborhood. And I used to go over there and cook at his house. We used to cook, cook up shit. Uh, cook, cook, up, cook up rocks and shit. 
So when he was first getting started, did did, did you think did you think he was gonna make it big? Shit, he used to be in there while we was cooking, making all that racket. Uh huh. Cause I was used to the uh, like the Houdinis, yeah, the fucking uh, Fat Boys and shit groups like that. They was nursery rhyming, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, I wasn't used to that gangster rap. I, he used to be making racket to me. <laughs> so when I was in the pen and Tracy. Uh, I had been listening to that song cruising down the street in my six four, but we won't. And one of the homies came up there. I said, "Man, uh, we was walking the track." I said, "Man, what uh, what what Eric out there doing?" I said, "Man, you heard of that song Easy E, cruising down the street in my six four?" I'm like, yeah. He said, "Man, that's Eric." That's, <laughs> I like you bullshit. He's like, yeah. yeah. Said, Man, that nigga didn't came up. Yeah. I used to say that shit wasn't going to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. And yeah. did, you, did you guys have much interaction as he got going as a established artist? Did you guys like run into each other a lot? Yeah, he used to come to the neighborhood a lot. Come uh, hang around everything. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Good dude. Did he ever talk to you about the beef he was having with uh, Suge and Death Row at the time? That that was a bunch of made up bullshit. Yeah, uh, like I say, the Crips, the Crips and Compton wouldn't even went for that shit. You know what I'm saying? That was our city, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Really, the whole fucking California is Crips, you know? Yeah, well, the dudes get to claiming that pyro stuff and the blood stuff. They they do anything wrong, they go up in that pen, they gonna find out really who run this shit. You know what I'm so, so, like, you think the media, people just kinda like, made it seem bigger than it really was, like the, the, the Easy e and Dr. Dre, did you ever see the movie uh, Straight Outta Compton? Yeah, yeah, they, they they did Easy Wrong. That was some bullshit. Yeah, that was bullshit. So yeah. you don't think like he, you know, he got beat up by those dudes? Hell no, hell yeah. no. We wouldn't have went for that bullshit. No. So um, so let's talk about you know so Suge Knight um, gets Dr. Dre over there to uh, to death row, and they pick up Snoop Dogg. And you hear the song. Just like that, that chick, Jewel. Yeah. She said, I came up with the name of that and the symbol. Bitch, that shit was already, <laughs> before we should even was even involved in that shit. Shit was already established. So uh -huh. she told a lie on us, a bunch of lies, man. So, you, so you're saying that she said that she came she up came, with the logo and the oh, name? Oh, that old bullshit. She's lying like hell. It's <laughs> bullshit. Okay. That shit was out before Shug even was involved in this shit. You know, and before it, and they it, even got Shug involved on me. And then, uh, so so you hear you hear that song "Deep Cover." What you think about that when, when you first heard it? Yeah. Uh, when I first heard it, I did, they had a hit. I, I said, figured they had a hit. Yeah. So. So, so Suge starts growing, death row starts getting bigger, and um, and and you're running into Suge every now and then. And um, I read in the book also that um, that it was kind of like you know he would see you be like, "What's up, Keith B D?" You know, yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, you know, it was a good relationship. Was kids, yeah, and all that. Uh, we went to this party in Hidden Hills. Uh, the six nine girls was doing a video shoot up there. Yep. And he had uh, he he offered me to come up there to the party. So I gotta ask you, who was the person at the gate not trying to let you in? Uh, Rent Sergeant Reynolds and Reggie Wright. Them they was down there. They was that on their right way production jackets. These all Compton polices and shit. So we get there and he like, what the fuck y'all come out here for? This is Sergeant Reynolds. I'm like, what? He, I like sure you invited us out there. You motherfuckers ain't getting in this motherfucker. So I seen one of the bras from Compton. I told her to go up there and get sure. So sure came down a hill that all 18 of us in. So I clowned that fool Sergeant Reynolds like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> Walked up in there, yeah. yeah he, 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 he didn't like me at all. Is he still around, Sergeant Reynolds? Yeah, I heard he worked with the Lakewood Sheriff's Department. Oh, okay. Yeah, lieutenant or something now. Okay. Yeah. So you get up in the you get up in the, the the video shoot and then there's like an incident with like some girl or something it says something to you. Yeah, she's like, "Just death row, motherfucker." 
And she'll tell that bitch, chill the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? You 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 on some stupid shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh and you ended up running into her like later on or some or her and She well and them at the club, yeah. Yeah. And they ended up getting beat up or something or kinda of fucked them up, roughed them <laughs> up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So so you was up in the party just chilling with Suge and Suge was cool, cool. It was like kind of like a Compton thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He 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 know what was up. Yeah. And then yeah. so uh um he goes to the Source Awards, and yeah. I think you got. Were you guys there at the Source Awards? Or no, not? that was in New York. I okay, was a, I was on. I was in Calvin. So he goes to the Source Awards, and uh, and that's where he says the famous like, you know, yeah. if you don't want the executive producer in the so videos, I'll be all of your videos, yeah, yeah. But he had got he really it was the Summer Jam uh, ninety five at the uh, Irvine Meadows. Uh huh. Uh, Biggie was uh, did that one more chance. That shit was the hottest shit out back then. Then that uh, what else he did? Uh, Love you when you call me Big Papa. Yeah. Dangerous, and who shot you? So we was on the Robin stage up there. We whoop. I seen him in my peripheral vision that he was on to the side. So when the when the thing turned around, I came. We came off the stage. He asked me, "What up, Kimmy D? Let me all at you." So how you know them motherfuckers? Same way I know you, motherfucker. Yeah, that's all. And uh, shit. Then that night, we uh, Puff had gave an after party at the L Ray. And uh, all my girl, my girls and their friends that came, I had sent them down in the VIP. So uh, they asked me to go get them, get them some champagne and shit. So I went and got a couple of bottles of champagne. I get back, Snoop Dogg and his little partners, uh, Daz and. Corrupt all them little dudes, the DBD dudes. They in my girl's seats. I'm like, I'm like, motherfucker, get y'all a little, what? Get y'all punk ass up. And they like, oh, gee, I didn't know that was you. Like, nigga, yeah, get y'all ass up. Well, I don't know who y'all think y'all are. Yeah. So, yeah, that was at the Hell Ray that night. And is that the night, like, where you got, what, um, went to another club and then, Shug's car got shot up, or was that another time? That was uh, different. Uh, that, was, that was like, that was like, maybe like, uh, July of uh, 96. Okay. So, we, so was, we was out on, uh, we was at the uh, Easy release party. And uh, at, the, at the House of Blues, and the party was over and shit. So we came. Waiting on our cars and shit. He pulled up and his Rolls Royce, him, Suge. It was Suge, Tupac, and uh and Snoop, they was all in uh three Rolls Royces. One was red, one was white, one was black. And uh he pulled up on Sunset, KBD, what's up? And I was out there with like 80 Crips, man. You know, nutty block, salt side, fucking grape streets. We was out there deep, deep, you know what I'm saying? All the people that we I get get money with, we was out there deep, and uh, this motherfucker was like, "What's up? It's cracking like it's over," and he like, "Let's go to the club paradise." So once we hit that Santa Monica Boulevard, shit, somebody shot that motherfucking uh, Rolls Royce up. Wow. But little Reggie started shooting back. He was in a uh, Cherokee. I heard I seen him on the video talking about how he was shooting back at the people. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Did they ever find out who did that or any? Uh, no, nah, we never found out. I think he thought it was us. Motherfucker, we with you, we, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. So, with you. so back to the Source Award. So so he says that, you know, the executive producer dancing thing, and then, and then you know, you feel the tension between Death Row and uh, Bad Boy. And I read also that you... Some of the folks felt like they took the attention because Wu Tang was getting in they, getting in their mess mess kid a little bit. Yeah, but well, they, they tried to take it out on the kids. They tried to take it out junior on like, mafia. junior mafia. Yeah, that's crazy. Some of those guys like. Yeah. So then you know, you have a mutual friend um, that Puff has named Zip, and Zip he's the one to introduce you to Puffy. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't just him too. It was uh, D Mac. Too. 
So D so, Mac was like his college roommate. Okay, so so tell me, so tell me about how you kind of came to know Puffy. Uh, through Zip. Yeah. Uh, shit. Uh, I met him a few times. He used my lowrider in uh, Usher magazine. I mean, Usher first video ever. Uh huh. Can I get with you? Use my lowrider. That was like in '93, '92. Then I seen him and Tupac at this party that uh, Jada Smith and him gang. Jada Smith and uh, was her husband Will Smith. They gave a little party, and I kind of seen what they were talking about with that Illuminati show. I go, okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so you got out of there, but like Puffy and Tupac, they was cool. They was they was kicking. They was cool. It. They, they looked like a couple. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then. Uh, and so that so that happened. So, but but your first like real dealings with him is when he feels like he needs some protection, like because now the death row bad boy beef starting to escalate. Do you think? Can you kind of elaborate on that? This was uh after that big Jake shit out there in Atlanta. He had gave he they was giving that BET tour. And he wanted to, uh, he needed some, uh, I guess he needed some protection. And he, uh, one night, Zip, me and Zip was rolling up Greenleaf in the phone run. And it was Puff. And he asked, uh, is it cool to come out there? I'm like, yeah. So we went to the concert with him in San Diego, Anaheim, Las Vegas. So he was asking, you, like, is it cool to come out there, like, in the sense that yeah, I want to like, make sure, like, we ain't going to, yeah. You know, we're not going to have problems. I with, said, what like, you going to have a problem for? He like, and he was talking about CEO. That's what he, that's what Suge's code name was, CEO. CEO. Yeah. So so Suge had him spooked. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and that kind of like the the last straw you think was when they were in Atlanta when that was like Suge's friend that ended up getting murdered, right? Yeah. At the yeah. party. Yeah. And it was like, wasn't it like Puff or alleg it allegedly it was... It was somebody at the party, or it was Jermaine Dupri's party, right, or something, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and somebody at the um, party he got shot from Compton. Yeah. Yeah. And One then, of Suge's friends. And then I think Suge blamed Puffy, but Puffy didn't have nothing to do with it. But he exactly. bl he blamed him anyway. Yeah. And uh, or allegedly. Yeah. Uh, and then that's kind of where the it really started to escalate. And uh, so, so you you start you know going with them to the shows and stuff. Would Death Row ever show up to any of them? Never, ever showed up to them. No, no, yeah, never showed up. Uh, just like that one, that that unsolved shit, that uh, Soul Train Awards. Talking about I, I pulled out a gun and talking. About, yeah, if I pull a gun. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Uh, you know, I'm from the old school. Ain't nobody, you know, you pull a gun without using it. Yeah. So I did. That was that was a bullshit scene. That was bullshit. Uh, Cause uh, I was in the suit in the VIP. I wasn't with Puff and them or nothing. They was backstage doing that little bullshit, that kitty shit with with Death Row and them. I, I didn't have nothing to do with that shit. When I pull a gun out on them, huh. and that little unsolved shit. Yeah. What, what, what do you think about some of those movies or some of the shows like Unsolved? All oh, that shit is bullshit. A lot of lies. Lie on me. Lie on me bad. Maybe, you know, stereotype me like I was a sag or game banger. Pants all off my ass wearing khakis and shit. I ain't wore khakis since junior high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was just, just stereotype Crips. You know, we, we was rich Crips. Yeah. Super rich Crips. I think you said in your book... You know, you guys were gangsters, like yeah, well, yeah. You we were no game Versace we were and, and Versace, suits. Briones and yeah, shit like that. Yeah, Armani's and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't pull up in the middle of the street in the low rider and jump yeah, out. Was, you looking for me? <laughs> nah, that was a lot of lies, a bunch of lies. Um. So so the bad boy, death row stuffs escalating. And um, it was one of the guys from your neighborhood. I guess he was going off to college to play football. Yeah. And uh, 
you you know you, you it was kind of one of those things you kind of took um what's his name victor or um they played football yeah and you gave him some money so he could get some clothes before he went to to college up no, he uh he was going off to uh play football for college and he was up to the, uh, at the World Foot Locker at Lakewood, Lakewood Mall. Okay. Town Center. And uh, he was up there, and there was three death row dudes up there, and he was by himself. So they were sweating because I guess he had on our south side hat. And he went to Dominguez with them dudes anyway. They was kids. So uh, he didn't. they didn't know that the homies that was, was coming up there, they came up there like nine deep to meet Marcus to buy him some some sweatsuits, tennis shoes, cleats, and shit like that. So this is the famous Lakewood incident. Yeah. That Lakewood Mall incident. Yeah, so Mark is, uh, once, once the homies came in there by nine deep, Mark is like, yeah, we got the advantage now. So he, uh, he socked the dude and snatched his chains. Just knocked him all through the shoe rack and shit. Mark was a swole, you know, football player, more athlete. Yeah. He had hands, too. So did he end up taking his chain and keeping it? Because I heard... He took the chain. That, that shit was like $300 change. Oh, uh, okay. And they talking about it was a $10,000 uh, bounty on that chain. That was bullshit. And so there's never no bounty on it? Because I've heard both... It don't so make sense. Yeah. 10000 300 Yeah. It don't make sense. Because I heard two sides. One, I heard that they, they took the chain, and another one, I heard they didn't. They snatched it, but they didn't take it. They got it. It was bullshit, though. A little bullshit train. So, so that incident happens, and um, right they, after that, then in the shooting that from the at the Lakewood, it was the shooting from the uh, from the EZ when he came and his rose got shot up. He thought that was us, I guess. Uh -huh. That was after the Lakewood. Oh, that was after the Lakewood incident. Yeah. So, so they go back. Does Orlando tell you about what happened at the Lakewood Mall or the homies? They say, hey, we ran the into The homies told me about what happened, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was, I think one of the dudes was Trayvon Lane or? Holds me. I don't know them, them dudes' kids to me. Yeah. And then so so that incident happens. And then um, and that was like, what, a couple weeks before the Mike Tyson fight? No. Well, what the uh, that shooting in, uh, by the Paradise Club. Right, that was about a month before the Mike Tyson fight. A know. month. So, so that happens. And then did Suge ever call you and say, hey, you know, why nah. y'all jump? You know, why you jump some of the, my guys? Or? No, I, was, I seen him the day before the fight. You saw him the day before the fight. And that, that was the yeah, first yeah. time you talked to him or saw him. Since that shooting night, that night, that shooting on uh, Santa Monica. So he never called you and said, hey, was did y'all do that? Or do you nah. know who did it? No. Nah. He just, you, you felt like he assumed that y'all did it? <laughs> No, uh, I seen him the day before the fight. Uh huh. You know, he was in his Rolls Royce, the same cars. Can't shake my hand. So, so now you, no you guys are in Vegas, right? Yeah. You, you saw him at the MGM Grand? Yeah. The day before the fight. So you see Suge at the MGM. He says, What's up? You yeah. guys shake hands? Yeah. Yeah, we shook hands and shit. What's up, big dog? And woo woo. People, he made me look famous because all them bitches was out there. They're like, who the fuck is this dude? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Came and gave me all that prop, all that love, you know? Shit. Like, he got to be somebody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so he was with Pac at that time? Yeah, he was out in front of the MGM. Okay. Yeah. And so you guys went up there, what, like 15 deep, 12 deep to uh, Las Vegas? We was about, maybe about 10. 10, 12, deep, yeah. And then you guys all bought tickets to from a scalper for, yeah. for the Tyson fight. It was fight. all over, yeah. And then kind of the plan was y'all were going to go watch the fight and, and then meet, meet at back the cafe. up. At the cafe and cafe, uh, I don't know what it's called. It was a cafe in MGM. Just some, uh, some 11, 8 East Coasters came in there. Like, KVD, they just jumped on lane. Like, whoo. They said, the devil rolling niggas, you popped them. You gotta be bullshit. And they like, yeah. So they're like, you need, you know, y'all want us to roll with us? Good job. I'm like, no, we cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they was Crips too, 1180s, Coast Crips, yeah. Yeah. So we ran in the lane, and they all uh, they like, man, one of the homies from the live out here. 
in Vegas, he like, uh, I know where them niggas going to be at the 662 Club. So we went up there. And, uh, shit, the whole van was acting like bitches. Not the whole van, but, you know, majority of the van was acting like hoes. So, so you're, talking to, you're, you're talking to Baby Lane, and he's saying he, he got jumped, and there was a local guy that told you guys that you knew where they was going to be? I was one of the homies. We, we, oh. we had a shop set up out there already selling birds. Uh-huh. And the homies like, man, they've been advertising all week. They're going to be at the 662 Club. Yeah. Do a little thing up there, concert at the party. So we went up there. And uh, we waited about an hour. They didn't ever show up. Uh-huh. We left. Went to the liquor store. Got us some drinks and shit. But all them dudes in that van was acting like hoes and shit. Well, not, not all of them, but, you know, majority yeah. of them. So you say in your book that you got tired of, like, hearing them, like, you know, act Like, like this dude's from, yeah, the police gonna kill us. Dude, you know this motherfucker? How the police kill you? I'm like, man, fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you ended up getting in the car with Baby Lane and them? Uh, I got in the car with them, yeah. And we uh, ran into them. We went up to the light on Sunset and Flamingo. And a uh, dude uh, was acting like he was in a parade or something. That nigga in that BMW hanging out the window. Hey, this Tupac, he's Tupac. And them bitches, uh, shit, they was hollering for him. And we let there go, that motherfucker. Made it, came up on the side of him. And uh, shit. So let, let's, let's talk about that. So, so you guys went to the liquor store, and then I think you said in the book Big Meech was with you, like in the. In no, I mean, I, that was a, that was a misprint. Oh, it was a misprint. Was yeah. Oh, okay, so um, so you was in the van. You guys went to the liquor store to get some bottles and stuff, and then you was in the van, but then you hopped in with Baby Lane, in in their car. Yeah. Okay, and then so y'all get in, and then you guys are heading back to the carriage house. Was it? Yeah, we was heading back to our room, yeah. To, to the rooms. And then you see this entourage or caravan of everybody. Yeah, and, yeah, and it was it was, the it dude. was Pac. Yeah, he was hanging out the window. And we just came up on the gutter lane. It was like 13 cars. All of them was black, too. Uh -huh. I guess the sugar had a thing for the black cars that night. So we went up on the side of them. And we seen them. And out there she wrote. And and I, I I read in the book you said that it looked like you you guys rolled up and Pac reached. Like he was reaching, yeah. It looked like he was ready to bust our ass. And she she like we got we, we was the first one. She yeah, luckiest one I guess. Hit that corner, gave a little chase, boom boom boom. We got the busting, we bust back, and she jumped up off that motherfucker like put it put the gun on the tire, got the fuck on. Okay. Yeah. So, so you guys parked the car, put the gun under under oh, the tire. Yeah. And then I think you said in the book you guys came back out. And you guys saw ambulances coming, or uh, with Tupac and and Suge in the ambulance. Hey, you wanted to say that for a Compton Street legend, man. Y'all need to go buy that book, <laughs> Compton Street legend. I don't get yeah. everybody the, the, yeah, the whole yeah. book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to say something for them. Yeah. Yeah. And we gonna do a doc, so. Yeah. So, so where, where can everybody then get we'll the get more detail to that. Where can they get the book? Yeah. So on Amazon, uh, Compton Street Legends, and it's going to be in uh, Barnes & Noble's uh, September the 15th. Yeah. It's, it's a good read, and it's the truth, and it's stamped, homeboy. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got no reason to lie. Everybody's saying this and this and that, but when nobody there but me, Greg Caden wasn't there. Motherfucking none of them suckers was there. I was there. So So Pac and, and, and Suge get shot up and they're heading to the hospital. Um and you guys you guys head back to uh Compton the next morning? The next year, the next day. Next day. So you guys head back to Compton, you grab the car, which was a rental, right? Yeah. And you guys head back, and uh, are you guys getting any phone calls about like, hey, we hear, we heard it, you know, this, no, this, and none that, of that, nothing? It's just uh, that next morning, uh, my Colombian partner called me, told me to go meet him at the ga gas station on uh, 
El Segundo and Lincoln right there. Sepulveda, it's a Chevron right there right by the auto refinery. We met there, he whipped out LA Times and they say, keep it in there for you. He's like, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Y'all in trouble. So, so Suge, Suge said it like was keeping. Suge, yeah, he, he only wasn't knew me. He he told them people that he told he told the police that keep his knees after you. Oh, uh, okay. Because I thought he didn't tell like who. It yeah, was. hell no. That been that dude. Day one, he said that shit. Keep his knees after you. Huh? He sick the police on us first fucking day. So, uh, yeah, as I say, the Colombian. I met the Colombian that morning. Well, he whipped out the newspaper all the time and say, "Keep your knee nephew you on it." He's like, "Man, woo, man, you tripping? Yeah, y'all going to jail? I'm out of here." And he just left me his little uh, his little workers, so that kind of damaged my thing. So later on that evening, that Monday, by four o'clock, by four fifteen, uh, Reggie Wright Senior. He comes straight to my fucking house. He uh, he come up off of Greenleaf, ran the stop sign and everything, doing about 70 miles per hour. Jumped out, he like, hey, motherfucker. He, let me tell you something, motherfucker. I'm like, what? He like, motherfucker, you killed my son? I'm coming to get your motherfucking ass. Ooh. I'm like, man, fuck you. He like, I'm just telling you, motherfucker. And I'm like, man, fuck you. Get your punk ass out of here. What the fuck you talking about? Yeah. And he like, I'm just telling you. So maybe about three weeks later, my nephew gave me a call and say, uh, meet me at Edie Falls office, the lawyer's office. And praying two straps. So I get there. It's Shug, Reggie Sr., and uh Sergeant Reynolds. They up there and they gave us sixty thousand to say Lane and to just say testify as Sam Lane didn't kick the dude. So, so why why were they up there? The to protect Chug, I guess. That was his motherfucking hitters, I guess. I don't know. Fuck them though. Do, do you feel like they was kind of like the whole Compton PD kind of was working yeah, on their payroll? Yeah, him, them, and uh, that dude, uh, what's that motherfucking name? I was in MDC with him. His name is David Mack. Uh huh. This motherfucker was in the protected custody cell. Yeah. The morning that the feds did the raid on us, I was, took 70 of us to jail. Yeah. He was in the protected custody cell. Talking about, what up, KPD? What up, KPD? Yeah. I'm like, what? And I didn't even know who the fuck the motherfucker was. But once the marshals got on that elevator, what is, they told me who that motherfucker was. Yeah, he's the guy that robbed the bank, right? Uh, yeah. The, pl the police officer. One of, yeah, the one of the sugar boys, yeah. So... So you, you, Baby Lane ends up taking his sixty grand. Tells him that you know Suge didn't, didn't do nothing, didn't yeah. do nothing and yeah. and the judge still says so I can see it's obvious it did some game nine years. So at this point, has like is Puffy ever called you say hey you know was that y'all you know on the Tupac thing or you know did he ever call you after I that? Wanna, I ain't want to answer that either, big dog. Say something for the book, my guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, you know, so let's talk about Biggie. Um, you, you you mentioned that, you know, you, you liked Biggie. He was a cool dude. Ooh, yeah. And um, there was um, th th there was an event or a couple of events that Puffy invited y'all to. Um, he and, and you guys went to the to the events. Um, the night Biggie got killed. The night Biggie got killed. Yeah. Yeah. It was there at Elsa. That was at the uh, auto? Peter, Peter's Pitcher, uh, not Peter Pitcher, but uh, Peterson and Auto Museum. Yeah. P P Peterson and Auto Museum. And you guys are up there just hanging out, kicking it? Yeah. And uh, were you guys in in there for the party or just hanging we out? We was in there for the party. Okay. It was inside for the party. You puff it and right it the day before. So so they ended up leaving, and then right before they was leaving, did, did Puffy say anything to you before they was about to leave? Or they was like, uh, they finna be at the Beverly Hilton, come up there and smoke some weed, have a little party. Shit, like we cool, we be up there. So once uh once they pulled up out of there, shit about everybody came back and running there. They just killed Biggie. 
I'm like, damn. Did you did you hear the shots or anything? Or no, I didn't hear shots. Everybody ran in there, he like, you killed Biggie. So LAPD, they didn't lock down the crime scene. They supposed to lock down everybody and question everybody. But they was uh get, telling everybody, let's go, let's go. So so Biggie ends up get getting killed that night and you know, what what was your guys' feelings on that? Did you guys have any assumptions who it might be or just you know, what what was your guys' feeling? I figured it was him, uh, the retaliation. Cause uh, a few people from there, they saw it was in the party. Uh huh. And so you think he was set up? And all that, yeah. They was ready for him, yeah. yeah. So, so Biggie ends up getting murdered, and we're gonna save some for the book. But uh, yeah. you know, you get you you guys get blamed for or yeah, uh, Tupac's and Biggie and Biggie's murder. Yeah, take Ray by took my car, all that shit. Put the pressure down, oh, man. I ain't did that shit, and they knew it. And then, and then basically, and we'll fast forward a little bit. Um, you're, you're you're in prison, um, or federal or, prison. Federal prison, and you get a the chaplain comes by, and um, tells you that your grandmother had passed away, who had been like a raised you after your mother passed, and yeah, uh, it's uh, it's the day that the, at the defense Raiders, two thousand. Uh, that was two. No, that was nineteen ninety eight. The day before, for for nineteen ninety eight, May twenty eighth. They they took us seventy of us to jail, all Crips and shit, all Crip gamers. So the next day, uh. The chaplain came to my cell about three in the morning, four in the morning, talking about uh, your grandmama passed. They gave me phone calls and stuff. I talked to Lane and all my people. Ooh. So about count time that day, about four that evening, he came back and said, uh, the nephew didn't pass. I said, what? Bullshit. And he's like, yeah. So they gave me a call and they said, nephew got shot and got killed. So that was, yeah, that was, that was, that was fucked up. And that happened within like less than 24 hours of each other, right? Yeah. I went to jail. And a lot of my cousins, you know, a lot of family members went to jail with me. My grandmother died, then my nephew died the same day. So that happened within a 24 hour period of me losing my freedom and uh, losing my grandmother and my nephew. They really was really, really close to me. My nephew and my grandmother was super close to me. I heard it real bad, yeah. So, and we'll fast forward to, you know, this, this, this cop, Greg Kading, and a lot of things happen, but we'll save it for the book. Um, they offer you the, the deal to be a profit, is it called profit for a day, or uh, uh, when they when offer you a deal? It was really like an immunity, and they, they, the day was a profit for that day to uh, tell them what happened. And, and, yeah, they already knew what happened because they had busted so many people. Yeah. And them dudes had already told on me and everything. And yeah, threw me under the bus. And there was a lot of people, you know, according to the book, that yeah. was telling. And, yeah. And you were able to piece things together because of the Freedom of Information That's Act. That. Yeah. You got the actual reports and you you, you were there, so you knew what. Was, were, they were blacked out the, the names, but you know who I they I know all the details, yeah. It's easy because it happened to me. Yeah. And I ask a lot of people because, you know, my opinion on it, like nobody went, you know, this is my opinion, uh, nobody went to jail. And actually, if you didn't do what you did, probably. It, 48 it, people would have went to jail. Yeah. All their kids would have been affected, their wives, people would have lost their homes, all that shit. I really saved their lives, home. Yeah. They gave me a deal I couldn't refuse. And, you know, people be, he a rat and all that shit. Just like that dude, Boosie. He a rat. Boosie, you don't even know me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You talking about wipe me down. You need to wipe your ass with some lotion. It's a little ashy ass bitch. Maybe my name tastes like shit in your mouth. You don't know me. You know what I'm saying? You don't know me, dude. You don't, you know, Freeway ain't gonna front you. I mean, ain't gonna say nothing because he a nice guy. But I ain't no nice guy. Fuck you and I'll fuck your little ass up. You need to get some lotion, little bitch. And leave, make my name taste like shit in your mouth. 
he, uh, I mean, everybody kind of had their own opinion. You know, Vlad has his regulars on his show. He's he usually had. I, I know he's had BG Knockout on there a few times, and yeah. he spoke his his piece about it. And you know, I guess he's and he asked Bootsy his opinion on it, and yeah. like. Um, Glad you gonna get them dudes hurt. They gonna stay stay in their lane. They rappers, and I'm a gangster. You know, you, uh. Well, and I noticed in, in one of Vlad's interviews, he talked about BG and and Baby Lane being being best friend or really good friends. Did you did you did you know BG and, and his brother Drayster back then? Yeah, I knew them. They was, they was rappers. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't they they weren't our best friends. Uh huh. I was Lane's best friend. He sure the fuck wasn't. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, I figured they just need to stay in their lane and uh, they're, uh, you know, trying to stay reveling off of us. Need to knock that shit off. It's your shit over with. You know, has been as rappers. Yeah. And they ain't even on my level, so I ain't really gonna even comment on their ass, really. But Bootsy, you don't know me, and make my name taste like shit in your mouth, dude. Get you some lotion and wipe your lotion down, bitch. And I ain't scared of you. I'll beat your little ass. Little ass, you motherfucking monkey looking bitch. Um, if there's something like you could like tell the people out there about about Keefe D and um, and, and when I reached out to you, when I read the book. I was like, man, there's there's just so much about your life that um, you know you 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 kind of was connected to the rap game, but not through the rap game, Damn, yeah. Because you was on this really high level, level yeah. You know, and, and making millions and exactly and and rubbing elbows with a lot high of power them. motherfuckers, yeah. yeah. And uh, money just you know attract you to money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like boozy. Motherfuckers had to check in to me, motherfucker, to come to my town. Stupid. Puff way bigger than you. You know what I'm saying? Them dudes way bigger than you. Red men, them all them bigger than you. Uh, Heavy D, all them, homie. You just a little small fry. Go wipe your ass down with some lotion, bitch. Little ass, you motherfucker. Uh, ooh, I'm mad at you. And you lucky I ain't out there no more, because I'll be out there waiting on sunset on your ass. Motherfucker, just to flip you. Did you ever get a chance to see uh, Glasses Malone's uh, video? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen what, what, like, what you think about that? It was cool. That shit. Every, everybody else making money off of it. Might as well make him some money off of it. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Did, did he ever reach out to you about like any of the specifics, or did you know Glasses? Like uh, his mom's lived it on our corner. His mom lived it on our corner for about four or five years. He's cool, dude. Young dude. Yeah. So, so back to like anything that you would share with like all of viewers out there about you know if, if you wanted to know something about Keefe D and 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 off camera, you expressed you know your love for your nephew and you know. Yeah. It's, it's, I got man. I'm a good dude, and I help anybody, man. You uh, know, I help my community. I helped everybody, man. I had everybody back, and I, I just hated how everybody just uh, threw me under the bus, stabbed me in the back, all that old bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's a bunch of bullshit. And Greg Caden act like he did some super cop shit. You didn't do shit, man. My homies took me down. You know what I'm saying? That shit, and I figured that shit wrong, you know? Yeah, and, and Greg Caden, he released the tapes to LA Weekly, which you didn't even know he was recording you, right? No. Uh, the FBI don't record. He's just an LAPD sitting there listening with their bullshit. Evidently, he had uh, bad intentions from the gate. Do, do you feel like he was, the whole time, he was thinking beyond his LAPD career? Yeah, yeah. Trying to get money, get rich off this shit. Yeah. Yeah. But you, y'all need to come buy my book, Compton's a Street Legend. It's a good read, man. It's nothing but the truth. You want to hear some real shit? Like that Greg Hayden bullshit, that old police under bullshit, just trying to uh, stereotype black folks. Go get my book, man. Compton Street Legends. Uh, well, we, pre right. we appreciate you, Keefe D, for coming by, man. All right. Thank you very much. For sure.